Hey riders, welcome to another video on our Adventure Motorcycle Review Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures, and today with me is Chris Gibbons, one of our ADV training instructors here in Bend, Oregon, who also happens to be the owner of a new Honda Transalp. So we want to walk through some of the pros and cons of this bike as we see it so far, and so let's get into character. Quick history on the Honda Transalp. It was back in the 80s, a 600cc bike. Now in 2024, they're releasing it as a 750 parallel twin. Around 83 horsepower here in the US. We hear that the Europeans are getting more like 90 from the factory, lucky. 459 pounds wet, fully fueled, ready to go. About 54 miles of the gallon should put it at around a 240 mile range. Almost eight inches of suspension travel in the front, just over seven in the rear, and just over eight inches of ground clearance on this bike sounds to me like a great adventure bike. So as promised, getting into first the pros about this bike, as Chris has seen it in what, a month and a half of owning the bike? About that, about 200 miles. About 200 miles, the first pro you mentioned was the power to weight ratio. It's got great power, uh, it does great on the highway, no problem passing vehicles, feels nice and light and agile. The thing I noticed about it is that 459 pounds, I think that's only about 20 or 30 pounds heavier than a Honda CB500X, and yet that is about 34 horsepower more than the CB500X. So it's sort of a neat power to weight ratio there for those that are considering the Transalp instead of the CB500X. Both great bikes, but a um, lot more power to weight ratio with the Transalp. All right, the next pro mention was that it was a nice size bike for folks under five foot 10, you thought? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm barely 5'8 uh, and about 170 pounds. So when I'm on it, I can almost flat foot it. Uh, in, inseam, can we ask? Uh, inseam's 30 inches. Okay, it's important because not everybody has the same sort of proportions, right? So, yeah. 5, 8, and 30, and you flat foot okay? Um, I'm almost flat footing. Almost. Yeah, okay. it's great compared to a lot of the other bikes that are in this category. For me, I want to be on something that I have, a, you know, a little better uh, stance on and fits me a little better. So, it seems like everything out there in this category is a bit taller. And, you know, for me, that's not such a great thing. And, and again, comparing it to like the CV500X, for example, I think that's at 32.7, uh, the seat height, the 32.7 inches. This one I saw was 33 and a half, so just under an inch difference and so much more bike and so much more power and carrying capability than the CV500X, so. The next pro that was mentioned was having a feeling of a low center of gravity and its overall maneuverability. You're a fan? For sure, it, it feels really similar to uh, I have a Honda CRF uh, Rally 300. It feels almost as maneuverable as that from the short time I've had on it and gotten a little bit of gravel riding in on it already. So but yeah, it feels nice and nice and agile. And that power helps in the forward agility as well. Maybe too much power for me, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, never too much. Next pro mention was that the quick shifter comes standard on this bike. Yes. You pounded through those gears, checked yeah, it out. It, it's extremely smooth, engages really well. It's also adjustable. Um, so you can adjust uh, if it's you know soft, medium, or, or firm as far as when you when you shift and do it. So that's nice to have that adjustability. It'll help you fly through the gears. Speaking of electronic features, it's got some ride modes ride modes that you can choose and control. Five ride modes, and then the user mode you can set to your preferences. It's like preset ones that you can't, and then user kind of like an Africa Twin, you can adjust the user mode. Yep to trash control and ABS settings and things like that. Yeah, and most people are, for off-road, are totally disengaging the traction control that you can totally turn off by holding the toggle switch up when, okay. you're, when you're in the user mode. Okay, and then last, it sounds like probably a good bike for your buck or bang for your buck with this bike. Yeah, it, uh, it's a bit cheaper than, uh, a little bit cheaper than some of the other bikes out there that have kind of the same uh, same features and benefits um, but overall it it just you know for me it it kind of was between this and a Tenere and frankly I'm you know challenged when it comes to heights so uh, this seemed to be the way to go and you know I'm kind of a Honda fan anyways. T7 being a little bit taller but again back in that similar price category and that's going to vary according to your market wherever you're from around the world but at least here in the U.S., both T7 and the Transalp came out at $10,000. I imagine we'll see this price increase over the next few years. But yeah, I agree for that money, that is quite a lot of bike for your buck. So as with any bike, of course, there are some possible cons you could consider too. Some of the things that were mentioned as not being so great about this bike. 
For one, the air filter location and changing. You did a little research. I, I believe it is, is certainly going to be a pain uh, <laughs> compared to just my 300 Rally. Yeah. You know, a lot of bikes it's pretty simple, but this is going to require, uh, I believe, removing a few side panels, multiple bolts, and then tilting the gas tank. It's going to be a pain, um, which if you're riding a decent amount of off-road, right, that's going to add some maintenance time or cost if you're sending it to the, somebody to do it for you. Because over an hour is what it sounds like is sort of a typical air filter change on that bike. And well, it is what it is. Don't let that keep you at home. The next con that has been mentioned is, and quite a few folks have mentioned this, is the ground clearance. Well, exhaust and engines have to go somewhere. It seems like they could have routed it a little differently. I mean, it's not too different than on the Tenere. It's just there's a little less clearance here, but you know, everybody's gonna be throwing an aftermarket skid plate on it anyways, so I think it'll be able to get the job done, you know, and take a beating. I mean, I don't know why they don't do like a tractor trailer thing, like the, like the stacks out here, just go straight up like that. Exhaust coming straight up with little little flappers up top there. Yeah. That would get the exhaust out of the way. Good. Hey, Honda, come on, go back to the drawing board. It is what it is. It might be a little lower than we would like. And of course, you're going to add the skid plates and that's going to protect things, but it'll give you even less ground clearance. But yeah, it would have been neat to, seen, uh, to have seen a little bit more clearance down there. One more con I think worth mentioning is not only is the exhaust kind of low and exposed in the front, but as well in the rear, the way the low muffler like that, just that if you do go down on the right side of the bike and you don't have um, luggage racks or something there to protect, that low muffler could kind of end up getting folded in a little bit and you have to be careful it's not rubbing on your spring or swing arm and stuff. What is this, Chris, about the rear rack situation? So the rear rack that was on the back, uh, it weighed, I think, at least seven pounds, I believe uh, about seven and a half pounds. Um, and I use soft luggage anyways, and so I get a little creative with using the mounting bolts. Drop seven pounds, so. And seven high up pounds that are the nicest ones to get rid of, so. Certainly, yeah. Aftermarket options will hopefully come in a little lighter than that. Yeah. And perhaps perform and do more that you want than the original did. Another point mentioned was the ability to disable the traction control. What's it like? So you do have to toggle through the menu into user mode, hit it over to traction, and then hold the toggle switch up. You know, and then once you do turn the key off, it's gonna reset that. You know, if you just possibly hit the stop switch instead of the key, if you're just on the road, on the trail, you know, talking with your buddies, probably a good thing to do is just leave the, leave the key on. But if you're, if you're bouncing between pavement and dirt all day, you might go to traction control on and off. Sounds like their menu system might be a little cumbersome, a little, a little tough to get through. They're still not making it like I want it to be, like on, off, a simple switch like that, but it That'd is be great. what it is. That would be great. Why it's not that easy is still beyond some of us, but a little bit of a cumbersome menu system. The more I use it, the easier it'll get. Obviously, yeah, yeah of course bike. you get faster. And the last point that was mentioned was, well, I think it's a great looking bike. Um, you said you, something about the headlight might be uh, not your flavor. I mean, total personal preference for anybody out there. I just wouldn't have minded a little retro look, maybe some circular circular headlight on there, one or two. I think, Rally style or something like that. You know, I yeah. think the uh, the face of the Tenere kind of looks a little, little more sporty, a little more rally, whereas this looks a little too much CB500 or a little, maybe a little almost, gold wingy dingy uh, kind of thing. <laughs> gold wingy. Yeah, so. It's almost identical to the CB if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, Honda could have probably put a little more creativity into that front end. So that wraps things up as far as the pros and the cons of the bike. But Chris, what do you have in mind for accessories for this bike? So uh, I think some obvious things that everybody's gonna wanna do is put some hand guards on there. So hand guards would probably be the first thing. I don't see myself changing out the handlebar just because it had a, has a nice kind of width to it and everything, and all I did was roll it forward a tiny bit. Obviously, skid plate, bash guard, uh, there's a number of things out on the market and available right now. I feel like if I wait a little bit longer, there's obviously, you know, things are gonna be in stock more, yeah. and we're not gonna have to wait as long to get them, and there'll be more choices, so I'm gonna kinda wait two or three months for the market to kinda catch up with things, uh, but probably throw uh, a little bit of an engine guard on there. I don't see myself putting, you know, the full protection on there. Um, and then I'll probably do uh, a little, you know, tail accessory there too. Um, since you might notice I chopped the uh, 
tail off and rigged that up a little bit with the LED the plate light. Might do a little bit of work on the seat myself, um, but I think the basics to this, um, I feel like the suspension's okay, so I'm not really even gonna mod that, but. Maybe the high fender kit? Maybe high fender kit, if I wanna give it that like, CRF 755 look or something like that. There's definitely going to be uh, some things done to it, so uh, we'll see. Well, that just about wraps things up for this first round of pros and cons on the Honda Transalp. My thanks to Chris for joining me. Very You're welcome. Bike. It was a pleasure. Good to see you. Folks, if you sign up for training, you might have Chris as one of your instructors here in Bend. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to get back to you and tell you how this bike is going. Look forward to future videos, by the way, where we start to add some accessories like we talked about. We'll do some install videos or something like that for you. So thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.